Deputy Speaker. Around 4 p.m. on January the 24th, a series of fires broke out at Cherry Gardens and at Scotts Bottom, Mount Bold and surrounding areas. Conditions were hot and windy, and the fires were burning in an area, a heavily vegetated area and populated area of the Adelaide Hills. My heart sank when the alerts began. It's only been a year since the Black Summer fires, and I'm sure I wasn't the only one experiencing a oh no, not this again feeling. Overnight, the blazes burnt more than 2,700 hectares and destroyed two homes, 19 outbuildings and two vehicles. The next day, Adelaide experienced its wettest January in nearly 50 years. The deluge contained the blaze. We were extremely fortunate. But at community fire meetings, the perennial issues of congested evacuation routes, power outages and accurate messaging were raised. This fire didn't reach the damage threshold of a declared disaster and trigger support from government agencies. And this raised other questions. For community leaders, it has highlighted once again that community expectations about the response from the three levels of government vary significantly, and the messages around bushfire action plans isn't reaching everyone. This messaging problem is not new, but it exacerbated in my electorate because of population migration. A third of the 39,000 people who live in the Adelaide Hills Council are new to the area every census period. The Mount Barker Council is a high growth area. Its population around 33,000 and forecast to reach 55,000 by 2036. Most of the newcomers are young um, and families, uh, and they move up from the southern suburbs of Adelaide seeking a tree change or relatively affordable housing on what was once farmland. This means they may have no experience of the Ash Wednesday bushfires or any subsequent fires. They are not cognisant of the risks and are unsure how to prepare. In response to the Bushfire Royal Commission, the federal government has pledged to do more about strategic leadership and resource sharing in times of natural disaster. However, it is the states and territories that continue to be responsible for the protection of life and property and recovery services. I'm concerned that too much is expected from our volunteer firefighters given the financial resources actually allocated to them. If they are expected to not only fight the fires but educate the community as well, there needs to be more funding. I also maintain that if individual landowners are, are being warned not to expect a CFS truck to be stationed outside their property. They should be prepared if they decide to stay and defend, and they should have some support to obtain firefighting equipment. In my community, it has been the firefighting units, uh, the farm firefighting units, who have been the last line of defence in many of our country communities. In January this year, the government set aside $2 billion for the National Bushfire Recovery Fund. More than two thirds has already been used on emergency response and recovery programs. One aspect of this fund that is missing, I believe, is funding for truly local projects. And I understand there is a community and, well and wellbeing grants component to the fund, um, and that works on mental health and resilience at a local level. However, I don't believe that this has the scope for practical community-led projects. And I'd like to see the government introduce a grant scheme similar perhaps to the Stronger Communities program, which allocates, as we all know, 150000 per electorate for up to 20 small capital projects. A local disaster resilience program allocating perhaps a similar sum to share in any electorate that has experienced natural disaster in the past five years, whether that be fire, flood or cyclone. And this program would aid, aim to build community capacity and it would encourage communities to engage with each other and to take responsibility at a local level for their preparedness. For example, in my electorate of Scott Creek, uh, in my electorate, the Scott Creek community used their own fundraising and various grants to set up a, a community recovery trailer with a generator and lights and food um, to help out in the event of a bushfire or extended power outage. Everyone has a role to play in building community resilience, and the best thing government can do is empower communities to help themselves. And I believe setting up a local disaster resilience program will encourage local initiative and I call on the government to consider setting aside funds for this valuable program to build our community capacity um, in the coming, uh, for the coming bushfires, the coming disasters that we know will happen in Australia in this federal budget. Thank you.